Hello, today I'd like to do a quick comparison between my old battery, this Bosch uh, calcium sort of standard uh, car battery, and my new uh, SSB uh, Power Sport lithium battery, super start batteries that are lithium range. Um, now, the first thing, they're both, well, this one's a 610 cca battery, this one's 600 cca battery. So as far as uh, starting capacity, they both have um, very similar specs. Um, this one is, you know, seen in many cars. It's good to a for a standard road car, um, reliable. I had this one, well, 2013 when I got it, and it's still functional now. Um, but for weight savings, is the primary reason going for lithium. Um, it's, it can't, can't really be beaten. And I'll give you a quick uh, demonstration of that. So I've got my uh, air conditioning scales here that I use um, for work for, for weighing out gas when I do aircon. With the Bosch battery on board, we are almost 15 kilos, 14.8 kilos, and that does include the terminals there. Um, I've left them on there because you basically do away with those when you go to the lithium because they've got a different type of connection. So nearly 15 kilos on the, uh, the old battery. Now we go over to the lithium, it's, de it's deceivingly light, I mean you, you look at it and you think it would be pretty heavy for, for its size but it's, it almost feels hollow, it's, it's crazy. Uh, on the scales, and we have 1.68, 1.7 kilos, um, just nearly 10%, nearly just a bit more than 10% of the weight of the, uh, of the old style battery versus the new, which is, um, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy light. So that's uh, the main reason that I'm, I've gone to this type of battery. Uh, I just thought I'd make a little video show on that because I was uh, amazed by the weight of it when, I, when it arrived. Now I just thought I'd show you this. Um, to go with the new lithium battery is a, um, a clamp I've made. Nothing special, just a bit of aluminium flat bar that I've drilled some holes in then and uh, sort of sanded it to a near, near smooth finish. There's still a few little scratches in there but you know, it should do alright. Um, only reason, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the old clamp. I just thought thought I had this bit lying around and I was a bit bored and I um, thought I'd make it. So it should hopefully uh, fit in there nicely and um, match with the new lithium battery, the lightweight looking aluminium. Now, there's supposedly one thing that these batteries don't really like, and that is uh, a parasitic draw or a, a, you know, a keep alive memory for your radios or alarms or, or whatnot, pulling them down, especially on a car that isn't driven uh, regularly, uh, it'll pull, pull the battery down and if it pulls it down too much it can potentially um, make the battery no good. So to get around um, just that constant parasitic draw that anything might have on it, not that there's anything on this car that does draw but to totally rule it out I've gone in and put a battery isolator in, uh, off, on, so in the off position it fully locks off, um, cuts, cuts the circuit on both the positive and the negative. Um, totally isolating that battery, which is also not a bad idea for for a safety type thing on a, on a motorsport vehicle. Um, so <laughs> the wiring uh, involved in that it probably weighs more than the battery just um, getting it all all in place and 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 teed up and then whatnot, which is um, just goes to show you how light those batteries really are. Um, the aluminium bracket I've made, holding it down, just use the original uh, threaded rods and chopped them shorter and bent them again, so that fits in there nicely. Nice and secure. It's a bit of foam on the bottom just to help take a bit of vibration out of it. Um, shouldn't be going anywhere. And uh, all the terminals are covered with uh, red boots and whatnot to, to protect against um, you know, short circuits and stuff. So you're probably wondering, alright, it's all well and good to have a super lightweight battery, but will it even start the car? So we're going to find out. It's the uh, first time I've uh, tried it with it. It's all hooked up. Uh, no jump leads or anything going down there, it's just solely running off that lithium super start battery. And the isolator is on, engine's all cold, and it has, you know, she's all, all ready to go. We started it in maybe a week or two.
one thing I would like to uh, bring to your attention. Now I'm not sure how critical it's going to be, but one thing I did notice uh, while browsing these batteries was there's a um, in the specifications for the battery on the manufacturer's website there's a max charge. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's a max charge rating, and that says 34 amps, which means it's going to be you shouldn't exceed 34 amps inwards. Um, when the engine's running, when you, well, when you're charging it on a bench charger or any any charging, you know, no more than 34 amps uh, in. Now, I could have gone a lot smaller battery. I could have probably got away with a 300 cca battery um, from from this SSB company. It would start the Subaru. It's a it's a four cylinder engine. It's low compression, being turbocharged, so it doesn't really take too much you know, it's too much power to get it going. But with the smaller batteries it does have a smaller maximum charge input and um, these bikes uh, sorry these batteries are specifically designed for motorcycles it actually says so here and it says not to put them in cars which I've done but um, I, I'm, I'm gonna presume the reason they specify it's for bikes and not for cars is bikes generally speaking have a, a lot smaller charging system there's a lot less electrics on a bike you have basically got the headlight you know, some of the fancy bikes might have ABS or they might have handle handle grip warmers or, you know, such. But for the most part, it's basically just your lights, your signal lights and your headlights. There's not, and running the engine, obviously. So there's not too much to draw on, on the motorcycle. And as such, they generally don't have very large charging systems. Subaru, on the other hand, um, uh, the standard Subaru alternator is around about, I think this one's 80, possibly 90 amps thereabouts and um, I think the newer ones are up to about 110 amps or the six cylinders up to up to about 110 amps I'm gonna have to double check that but I know that they are bigger so that's um, obviously quite a lot more power there um, and a car does have a lot more electrics in it it's got stereos it's got electric windows it's got the headlights it's got air conditioning and blower fans so there's a lot more electrics in a car than there is on a motorcycle and as such they have a lot uh, larger charging systems now, when the battery is discharged, it's basically going to take the current from the alternator. Um, the, the voltage is going to rise, the alternator is going to see the voltage rise, the regulator is going to reduce the field current and in turn reduce the system voltage to, to, to limit it at the, at the 14 volts or 14.5 or whatever the particular setup is, uh, is limited at. Now, if the battery is flat, yes, yeah, spinning the engine hard so the alternator is turning fast, and you're not using a lot of electrics like your windows this car has no air conditioning no blower fan in, in it anymore um, so there's very little electrics in it basically the only uh, things in it is the fuel pumps and uh, and the ECU so you potentially have a lot more surplus energy from the alternator and if the battery is discharged it could potentially take a lot of that energy a lot more than the uh, specified 34 amps um, and this is going to be even worse on a on a smaller battery that might only take 20 amps and maximum inwards or rated at 20 amps inwards so that was one of the things that uh, made me choose the 600 cca battery was that it had a larger rating for input current um, which should hopefully i don't think i'm gonna be able to exceed 36 amps into the battery i mean i've i've got a couple of big fuel pumps in there the engine running uh, there's a scavenger pump because it's a low mount turbo so there's actually there's a bit of electrics in the in the vehicle still um, and once the once the battery is charged it's not going to want to take that uh, amperage any in any way it's only in a discharged state so I'm hoping I'm not going to exceed that 36 amp or 34 amp limit um, but it is something to be mindful uh, when swapping these batteries in there and another thing potentially I mean I don't know how these batteries go with heat um, obviously it's the first time I've used one um, I haven't had much uh, professional experience with them um, but I mean the engine in, in, a, in a race car or in a, in a street car even does get a fair bit of heat built up in it and um, the battery's right next to the engine so you could could potentially be running into issues that might not be quite as as severe on a motorcycle you know smaller engine there's a lot less uh, stuff around it keeping the heat in there's a bit more wind and whatnot flowing over it to, to take that heat away um, so that could be another reason why these, why the SSB do not recommend these for use in cars. Um, but I mean, I'll, I'll see how it goes. The, uh, the battery was uh, $450 delivered, so it's not a cheap battery. Um, but I'm hoping 
you know, I'll, I'll get the, uh, the rated use out of it at least, maybe more, um, and see how it goes.